Okay, welcome everybody to session one for DISC 2020. Um, just to remember, if you have any questions you want to ask, either use the raise hand feature in Zoom or write a note in the chat window of Zoom or post something in the appropriate Zulip stream. The first talk is entitled Scalable and Secure Computation Among Strangers, Message Competitive Byzantine Protocols by John Augustine, Valerie King, Anasura Rahman Mala, Gopal Pandurangan, and Jared Saya. Jared will be giving the talk. Thank you, Jared. So our, um, our work in this paper was motivated by um, recent results on scalability of Byzantine agreement, leader election, and committee election. In, um, in large networks. So there's recent results that have shown that somewhat surprisingly, you can actually um, solve these problems with soft O of N uh, messages where N is the total number of participants of the system. And then of the soft annotation, of course, holds, uh, hides logarithmic terms. Um, however, unfortunately, all of these uh, results assume the KT1 model where uh, initially every node knows every one of its neighbors and knows the IDs of all of its neighbors. And a long-term problem that this paper is sort of a step towards is how can we extend these types of results to, to churn systems that would occur in systems like Bitcoin, for example, or blockchain type systems. One step in this direction that this paper takes is um, to extend these results to the KT0 model, which is essentially the model where um, nodes don't know their neighbors a priori. So they learn a neighbor's ID only upon receiving a message from it. And I want to um, make it clear uh, here that we can easily convert KT0 to KT1 um, by having this initial step where every node communicates uh, to its neighbor solely for the purpose of introducing itself, giving its name. But this requires a quadratic number of messages. And this is exactly what we're trying to avoid. So the question that we're, we're interested in um, that we address in this paper is, can we design Byzantine agreement, leader election, committee election type protocols that require subquadratic messages in KT0? So be a little bit more specific about our model. We assume an adversary that is static in the sense that it's required to take over all the nodes initially um, uh, that it controls uh, uh, up to a, a constant fraction. It's rushing in the sense that it can um, see the messages sent by the good IDs, the good nodes before um, sending its own messages. And it's computationally unbounded so that we can't use cryptographic protocols. All the nodes are assumed to have dis distinct IDs um, in this range one n to the k, where n is the total number of nodes in the system. And the Byzantine nodes are allowed to choose their own IDs. We assume synchronous communication and a, a fully connected network. A result is an algorithm that solves Byzantine agreement, leader election, committee election in KT0 with um, polylogarithmic latency. Um, a, and a number of expected messages, which grows uh, slowly with the number of messages that are sent by the Byzantine nodes. So if T is the minimum of N squared and the number of bits sent by the Byzantine nodes, then um, our, our expected bandwidth cost is equal to this. So note that if there's, if there's no messages sent by the Byzantine nodes, this is soft O of N. And um, if, if there's a quadratic number of messages that are sent by the Byzantine nodes, then this is still soft O of N squared. We can handle up to one quarter fraction of Byzantine nodes and we succeed, it's a Monte Carlo algorithm, succeeding with high probability in N. This uh, latency bound holds even in the congest model. And um, an, a, another interesting aspect of our result is that um, not only does a, is it an algorithm that works in the KT0 model, but the way that we talk to, to um, strangers is, very, is, is actually even more constrained than typical KT0. So our algorithm only writes to unknown IDs via two primitives. Either we send a message to a random uh, unknown node, sometimes we, we will do that, or um, we, send a, we broadcast a message to all the strangers that, that we're connected to. Um, I guess I don't really have much time to go over um, the, the technical details, but um, we critically rely, the main technical um, result that we have is this, uh, um, this routine called large core Byzantine agreement, which basically allows for um, Byzantine agreement to occur um, even in a, in a set where um, the, the, um, the views, uh, this SX, um, the number of nodes that another node knows about um, just mostly overlap. So this is a routine that we make extensive use of 
And it may be of independent interest. It allows almost everywhere a Byzantine agreement, in this case where you have views mostly interlap, overlap. And the basic idea is we, we have nodes that are active. Initially, there's a small number of nodes that are active. We make use of this LC, large core Byzantine agreement, to try to um, come up with this implicit agreement algorithm. Then we check to see if we, if we succeeded correctly. This is a promise agreement. If we've noticed that we failed, then we double the probability of, of a node becoming active. And we keep doing this until the probability of a node being active is so high that we might as well just give up and then just do a heavyweight Byzantine agreement algorithm. So uh, we have essentially matching lower bounds um, that I don't have time to, um, to get into. Um, so we're optimal up to logarithmic terms. Um, and, uh, and, and this is for fast algorithms only. Um, our future work includes uh, closing the gap between upper and lower bounds for, um, for, for randomized algorithms, uh, not just for algorithms that are fast in the sense that they, they need to take only polylogarithmic rounds. And then um, taking the next step to try to adapt our algorithms to better, better handle churn and, um, and permissionless uh, systems. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? So um, I have a question that may be related to the, your last point about future work. Um, so yes. does your, um, yeah, so maybe your algorithm doesn't handle it, but what would be some difficulties perhaps in handling nodes leaving, even if it were announced somehow? Um, well, so, so nodes leave, I mean, if you have good nodes leaving, um, and I guess you don't have too many of them leaving. Yeah. It may not be too hard to handle, but it, but the thing, the thing with churn is that you could have, you know, a large number of good nodes lead, leaving so long as there's a large number that are joining and, and you'd like to be able to handle that case as well. And that, that's definitely harder. Yeah. Yeah. So we could tolerate a small number of good nodes leaving so long as um, the total number of good notes remaining is like a three quarters fraction, for example, that would be okay. Uh -huh. But that's not really true. Yeah. Um, so there's a, a question uh, from uh, Chow Dong in the chat it says, is uh, little o of t possible in the message complexity? Oh, um, well, not for, um, for fa what we call fast algorithms, algorithms where um, it's polylogarithmic. Um, you, you require polylogarithmic latency. So there's a, um, there's a lower bound that we have in the paper um, showing um, that, which follows basically from this, this classic result on um, lower bounds from message complexity. Um, however, in, in general, we don't know. I mean, maybe if you took a little more time, it might be possible. I, I would be really surprised, but it, but it would be cool <laughs> if you could do that. Um, and then uh, Isaac Chef has his hand raised. Please, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so Amitabh, um, I, I see your question. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, uh, I, I was just curious. I, maybe I missed it, but are there any assumptions about the graph structure of the initial known neighbors? Yes, it's assumed to be fully connected. Um, it just has to be so connected. Our, it could be like a long line. Uh, no, no, it's it's assumed that uh, um, it's a clique. Um, um, so, so basically we've got, um, um, it's, it's a fully connected graph initially. And Amitabh, I also see you, you have a question um, in the group chat. Um, yes. This is, so it's a step towards churn. So we, we fully solved this at the KT0 model. Okay. Yeah, so our, our, our result is, it's, it's, it's for the KT0 model um, in this case where it's synchronous fully and fully connected. Okay, step towards full churn, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the case that we fully solved. And is there a maximum number of Byzantine failures tolerated? Do you just inherit the usual like one third bound? So for the, um, the we can handle up to a one quarter fraction. So it's gotta be battered away from one quarter fraction of Byzantine failures. Great, all right, thank you very much. Our next talk is entitled Improved Extension Protocols for Byzantine Broadcasting Agreement by Kartik Nayak, Ling Ren, Elaine Shi. Nitin Vaidya and Zhuolun Zhang. And Zhuolun will be giving the presentation. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, this is Zhuolun Zhang from UC. Here I'm happy to introduce our paper, um, Improve the Extension Protocols for Byzantine Agreements and Broadcasts. 
So Byzantine brokers and agreements with uh, long input messages are widely used in large scale distributed systems such as permission blockchain, where the parties want to agree on a block of large size such as several megabytes. Therefore, efficient and simple constructions of BB or BA with large inputs uh, is theoretically interesting and also practical. Our paper focuses on a family of BA and BB protocols called extension protocol, which can extend a binary BB or BA into a multi-value BB or BA with arbitrary input lengths. As a simple example of the extension protocol for BA, running one bit BA L times can give you a BA protocol for L bit input. However, the communication cost of such approach is L times the cost of one bit BA, which is lower bounded by N squared times L due to a quadratic lower bound on the communication cost of one bit BA. So this naive approach has cost N times larger uh, than the optimal cost NL. The state of the art extension protocols has achieved optimal cost asymptotically with sufficient large input size L. So the communication cost, uh, it contains an additional term and the cost becomes an L when L is large enough. The contribution of our paper is to further reduce the communication cost by reducing these additional terms. So the optimal range for the input size can be larger. We also give much simpler constructions of the protocol compared to previous work. So our protocol assumes uh, the communication channels to be reliable, authenticated, and also in this talk, we assume synchrony but other results can be extended to asynchronous settings as well. And for the adversary, there are two kinds of security assumptions. We made improvements in both settings, but this talk will focus on the authenticated case. So our prot protocol combines uh, two existing primitives, one from the coding theory and another from the crypto community. We, we, we will use uh, linear error correcting codes or Ray Solomon codes that can encode M minus T data chunks into N data chunks. Then even T out of N chunks are erased after the encoding, the original data chunks can be recovered. The second tool we will use is called a cryptographic accumulator. It can prove some large elements inside a set with a small size proof. Uh, we can think of Merkle tree as an example of the accumulator. So with Merkle tree, we can verify if a data chunk is valid, giving the Merkle tree root and the Merkle tree proof. So in this paper, we construct simple and efficient uh, uh, extension protocols by combining these two primitives. Uh, now let me give you a quick overview of how our extension protocol for BA looks like as a quick example. So our uh, protocol conceptually contains three main steps, encode, distribute, and reconstruct. In the encode step, the parties encode their inputs into data chunks using error correcting codes to add more resilience. Then they build a Merkle tree based on these data chunks and run a KBBA to agree on the Merkle tree root. In the distribute step, parties distribute data chunks with Merkle tree proofs efficiently. So the guarantee of this step is that uh, if at least one honest invokes distribute, then all the honest parties can reconstruct the same message later. In the reconstruct step, parties can receive enough data chunks and verify the data chunks using Merkle tree proof and root. Then they can decode and decide on the same message. So more details can be found in the long video or the, or the paper. So finally, um, let me give you a quick summary of our results for the authenticated extension protocols. So we improve the communication complexity for both honest majority and dishonest majority under synchrony. We also give uh, authenticated protocols under asynchrony. So for the uh, unauthentic 
we also have improved unauthenticated extension protocols under both synchrony and asynchrony as well. So please refer to the paper for more details. Um, so thanks for your attention and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Um, any questions? Um, so I have a kind of simple question. So um, do you think that it's possible to uh, continue to improve those additional terms? How small do you think they can get? So currently you have a gap, uh, like a small gap. Uh, the additional term uh, we have now is uh, k times n square. So the optimal additional term would be n square. So the, there is a gap of k, which is uh, like a, your, your security parameter, k is your security parameter. So in order to achieve n square, we first need a uh, improvement in the one bit BA or BB. Oh, you mean improvements in the, the subroutines that you're calling. Is that correct or? Oh, uh, sorry. So it would be improvements in the subroutine protocol is, did I understand? Yeah, you? yeah, we, we, we need, first need uh, improvement in the primitives we use like this one bit BA. Okay, thank you. I'll ask another question then. Um, so what do you see is kind of like the next step in this word in this work? Um, I would say it's per perhaps to see how these protocols can be used in practice, like in real systems, mm -hmm. which components is uh, suitable for the use of these uh, extension protocols. Mm -hmm. Since they are very, I would say very simple and modular. Um, are the the uh, big O hiding some, some uh, big constants? Uh, I don't think so. The constants are very small. Yeah. What, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. What about the the epsilon there? Uh, it's right. Right. You can uh, you get rid of it. What? Why do you need it? Um. So for this case. There is epsilon in the communication complexity. Uh, yeah. So the communication looks like uh, n times L uh, over epsilon. So when your epsilon is small, the communication complexity is very bad. But when okay, epsilon so, so, so the epsilon is like crucial there for getting the communication complexity known. Yeah, yeah. We need the epsilon to be constant in this case. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. We'll move on to the next speaker. Thank you. Okay, so the next talk is entitled From Partial to Global Asynchronous Reliable Broadcast by Diana Guiné, Martin Hurt, and Chen Da Hu Zhang. And Diana will give the presentation. Hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to tell you about our results on obtaining global reliable broadcast using partial broadcast channels in the asynchronous setting. My name is Diana, and this is joint work with Martin and Chenda, and we come from ETH Zurich. So, broadcast is a fundamental primitive of distributed computing, and it allows a party to consistently send a message to an recipient. The parties are communicating through channels, so what makes obtaining broadcast difficult is that some of the parties involved, including the sender, might be corrupted. Then the goal of a broadcast protocol becomes to help the honest parties obtain the same outputs. And in the case where the sender is actually honest, we want the honest parties to output exactly the message that the sender wanted to send. The model that is widely used in the literature is a synchronous model where the messages are delivered within some predefined amount of time. The asynchronous setting, on the other hand, is more realistic, but also more difficult. Here, we only know that the messages are delivered eventually, at some point in time. So a party cannot know whether it has not yet received a message because the message is simply delayed, or because the party that was supposed to send it is actually corrupted and that message was actually never sent. And about corruption, we consider a central adversary that can control the delay time of the messages and that can corrupt up to T parties, making them send wrong messages or not send some of the messages at all. 
in order to cheat the protocol in a coordinated manner. In this model, to achieve a synchronous reliable broadcast, a protocol has to satisfy two properties, validity and consistency. Uh, validity requires that if the sender is honest, then all the honest recipients eventually terminate and output exactly the message of the sender. And then consistency requires that if one honest recipient terminates, then all the other honest recipients eventually terminate as well and with the same output. This is different from the synchronous setting, where to achieve synchronous broadcast, the honest recipients have to terminate regardless of the honesty of the sender. We can now talk about the thresholds such that uh, the thresholds on, on the number of corrupted parties such that broadcast can be achieved. In the traditional model, so where parties are simply communicated through channels, it is well known that synchronous broadcast can be achieved only when uh, less than one third of n parties are corrupted and the same bound applies in the asynchronous setting. However, if we assume a public key infrastructure, then the bound looks much, much better in the synchronous setting, while in the asynchronous setting, the bound remains the same. And a fascinating, live, a fascinating line of works has investigated the impact of assuming BCAS channels among every group of B parties in a synchronous network. A BCAS channel is like a mini megaphone, allowing a party to consistently send a message to B-1 recipients. Uh, and firstly, it was shown that by assuming three cache channels, synchronous broadcast can be achieved only, only when T is less than one half of N. And afterwards, the result was generalized, showing that by assuming B cache channels, synchronous broadcast can only be achieved when T is less than B-1 divided by B plus one N. And a question that naturally arises is whether assuming BCAS channels in the asynchronous setting can help us obtain a better result or here the bound of one third is simply impossible to overcome. And of course, if we can obtain a better result, then what is the trade-off between the strength of the communication network, namely the size B, and the corruptive power of the adversary? We have addressed these questions in our paper and we have obtained feasibility and impossibility results. Firstly, for impossibility, we have extended the result, the result from the synchronous setting, showing that there is no protocol achieving reliable broadcast secure against at least B minus one divided by B plus one N corruptions in the asynchronous setting. And then for feasibility, we have first obtained a protocol achieving a synchronous level broadcast using three cast channels that considering the impossibility result is optimal. And afterwards for the general case, we have obtained an asynchronous level broadcast protocol that is almost optimal considering the impossibility result and a protocol that achieves a slightly weaker version of broadcast, which we have called non-stop reliable broadcast. What happens is that the parties involved the honest parties do obtain outputs as expected in a reliable broadcast, but they might have to continue running even after they obtain an output. We have shown that the impossibility result applies to this case as well, making our protocol optimal. Um, that was it. Thank you for your attention. And now, if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Um, we do have a question from Zulip. Uh, from Daniel Brandmore. Interesting approach. Did you get any results on the number of data packets for the various situations? Thank you. And um, I assume that by data packets, uh, you would mean messages. Um, we haven't actually counted the number of, of messages that are sent throughout the, the execution of the protocol, but um, for the general case, the protocols are not exactly efficient. They, the number would be somewhere around n choose b times some polynomial in n. So our protocols are polynomial in n only when b is very small or b is very large. And there's uh, another question in the chat. Um, is there some quick intuition for where the threshold b minus 1 divided by b plus 1 n comes from? 
similar to how the n over three threshold can be intuitively thought of from the n equals three case where one agent can't distinguish between two agents, one of whom is Byzantine? Um, I would say that uh, the it's easy to see the intuition if we look at only uh, B, B plus one recipients, and we assume that out of those B plus one, two are corrupted. Um, in this case, it is quite, easy to show that um, that no that no protocol can achieve reliable broadcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we will uh, move on to the next presentation. So um, the next presentation is entitled Fast Agreement in Networks with Byzantine Nodes by Bogdan Klebus, Darek Kowalski, and Jan Olkowski. And Jan will be giving the presentation. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, hello, so my name is Jan Olkowski, and today I will present to you our paper entitled Fast Agreement in Network with Byzantine Nodes. And this is our TCA joint work with Bogdan Klebus and Darish Kowalski. Okay, so in our work, we consider the deterministic consensus problem in synchronous arbitrary networks. Uh, we deal with two different types of nodes failures, uh, the Byzantine failures and the crash failures. Uh, in some cases, we allow nodes to use a mechanism of authentication. Uh, our main motivation for this work was to examine how fast can be solution for the consensus problem in arbitrary networks. Uh, our, uh, in our paper, we propose three new algorithms for the consensus problem in arbitrary networks. And we proved that uh, these results are asymptotically optimal in, in terms of time complexity. Uh, first, we improve the time needed to solve the Byzantine consensus to linear uh, 2t plus d subscript 2t. Essentially, the parameter d subscript 2t measures the longest possible to obtain diameter after removing 2t nodes. This captures the following idea, uh, how long it can take to communicate between two nodes in the worst scenario of node failures. Uh, our algorithms work for a class of networks in which each node has a degree of at least 3t. Uh, we obtain a similar result for the Byzantine consensus problem with, with authentication. Uh, the authentication allows us to relax the condition on, on node degree and achieve a slightly better time complexity. Uh, finally, we propose a time optimal algorithm for the early stopping consensus problem with crashes in arbitrary networks. Uh, An early stopping algorithm is obliged to stop in time proportional to the actual number of failures. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, Okay, so uh, let's begin with the lower bound, which gives us some intuition. Uh, in our paper, we proved that for every algorithm for Byzantine consensus, there exists uh, every deterministic algorithm, there exists an execution uh, in which the algorithm must perform at least uh, uh, t plus d subscript to t over four rounds uh, and consider the network in the picture. Uh, the network consists of two independent sets, A and B of size t, and uh, two L clicks of size t to uh, t. And if we make the nodes from the set B Byzantine nodes, uh, then the symmetry of the network with respect to the uh, sets A and B prevents node from the set C1 from receiving trustworthy message from nodes from the set E1 uh, for approximately two L minus one rounds uh, this part. Okay, uh, so, uh, okay, also note that uh, in the depicted, uh, depicted graph, we have the DT is equal to three uh, while the d subscript to t is equal to 2l minus 1, uh, just considering uh, a family of such networks uh, when the parameter l is going to infinity, uh, this shows us the time, this, the time complexity separation between Byzantine consensus problem and Byzantine consensus problem with authentication. Uh, okay, uh, let's move to the algorithm. Uh, so first, first, first Byzantine algorithm. Uh, for the Byzantine consensus problem, the fastest so far algorithm, the deterministic one, has been proposed by Dolef et al. And it has time complexity t times d subscript to t. Uh, we give a faster algorithm that works in, in time t plus d subscript to t. Uh, in our approach, we mix the standard exponential information gathering technique with auto communication. The nodes first authorize their initial values by constructing exponential structures in their local neighborhood. Uh, then auto communication is used only once to synchronize the information and then do uh, for access to those structures for all nodes in the network, which is sufficient to nodes uh, to decide. Uh, okay, uh, so the second algorithm is fast authenticated. Uh, an application of similar idea 
As for the Byzantine consensus uh, without authentication, it has two fast, fast authenticated algorithms. Uh, the difference is that in the case, the presence of uh, authentication allows us to use uh, simpler structures uh, that are responsible for authorizing nodes' initial values. Uh, now the size of the structure can be polynomial in N, and this is here. And uh, also the part of auto communication in this case can be done more efficiently in time B subscript to T. Uh, okay. Uh, so our first contribution is an early stopping algorithm for consensus with crashes. Uh, this algorithm adjusts to the actual number of nodes that crash in the course of an execution instead of relying on the upper bound on the number of such fail uh, failures. Uh, shortly to achieve that, nodes monitor change, uh, changes in the view of the network. Uh, we say that the view is unstable if a node learns about other node for the first time or learns about a significant number of crashes. Uh, when the view stabilizes in the mentioned sense, nodes are ready to decide. Uh, okay, and now, uh, okay, future directions. Uh, so a few open problems emerge from our work. Uh, first, the fast Byzantine algorithm works for networks with minimal degree free T. Uh, the question is, uh, can the requirement on the node's degree can be decreased? And at the same time, uh, can the linear time complexity be preserved? Uh, second, the fast Byzantine algorithm relies on structures of exponential size. Uh, for networks in which the underlying topology is a clique, the uh, size of such structures was reduced to the polynomial in N. Uh, the question is whether similar techniques could be applied to arbitrary networks. Uh, last, there is a factor of one over four between the lower bound for the Byzantine consensus problem and algorithm time complexity. This is also something that we believe could be improved. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to ask any questions. Are there any questions? Uh, so, so I had a question. Uh, let's see, okay. if you go back to, um, the, the slide with the, I think it's slide five. Uh, about which other? Uh, slide five, I think it had the picture with the blue line. Sure, sure, yeah. yes. So I, I didn't really understand the, the, the point right there. Could you maybe say it again? Yes, yes, sure. The, this was the point that, uh, okay, when we consider the authentication, uh, it, it allows algorithms to work significantly, significantly faster. Uh, so in arbitrary network, the authentication really improves or gives additional power to algorithms, uh, which was not the case uh, when the underlying network was uh, click. Yeah, so the, there's example of such network. Uh, if we examine uh, how the, these parameters works here, the D subscript two and D subscript two T, uh, we will get that that is a significant uh, difference between those those two parameters. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. Okay, th th this was the point of this slide. Um, so Sergio um, says there is an algorithm and lower bound for synchronous consensus in arbitrary networks in SSS 19. Yes, sure. Uh, this is about a slightly different, uh, uh, I believe, uh, settings at the beginning because uh, at the, the SSC work, they considered, uh, the authors, they considered that the network is an input to the algorithm, so they um, designed the fastest possible algorithm for this particular network. Uh, while we are trying to do something more general, our algorithms works for uh, our algorithms work for uh, a class of networks, not a specific network. I think this is the difference. Uh, the, the, this is between our work and their work. If you are talking about the same paper, because. Uh, so Eric Severson asks, what is the class of networks it works for? Uh, excuse me, uh, what is the classic network? That's the question, right. I don't know, yeah, Eric, you, you want to- You said that it works for a class of networks, your algorithms. Uh, a classic, uh, maybe I, uh, I said something wrong. I meant arbitrary networks. Uh, okay, so any, any network, well, I guess- uh, yeah, this is this is the this is the trick that uh, our networks are not uh, arbitrary at all. This is the requirement on the node degree. Uh, it must be some uh, some requirement on node degree because this is the two T plus one connectivity. Uh, but yeah, but but almost every network. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, our next presentation is um, entitled Byzantine Lattice Agreement in Synchronous Message Passing Systems by Jiang Zheng and Vijay Gar. And Jiang will give the presentation. All right, thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Xiong. 
My presentation today is about the Byzantine Nettis Agreement problem in message passing systems. Um, this is a joint work with uh, Vijay Garg. Um, here's the roadmap of my presentation today. I'll first go over the motivation and then I'll talk about some preliminaries. Then I'll show our re results and some related work. Then I'll summarize our earning stopping algorithm and uh, logarithmic runs algorithm and some open problems. So the primary motivation behind that is agreement is its application in implementing linearizable update query replicated state machines. And in this type of state machine, they only support update and the query operation, but not update query mix type of operation. And we assume that all updates are commutative. Examples include conflict-free uh, conflict replicate data types and atomic snapshot objects, et cetera. Another motivation is uh, its relationship to atomic snapshot object. Um, as shown by RT at all, uh, implementing ASO can uh, implement a uh, Nettis agreement and any algorithm for Nettis agreement can also use to implement ASO. And we work on a completely connected message passing system with N processes. Um, we assume there are at, uh, at most F Byzantine failures. And we work on a synchronous system. A synchronous round is defined as a receiving message, do some local competition and sending message again. And we will assume the network is reliable, which means if a PI sends a message to PJ, then eventually PJ will receive the message. A join seminatis is defined as a partially ordered set that has a join and its upper bound for any non empty sub finite subset of the that of the set. And here's an example of a Boolean Nattis. And the elements of this Nattis is are all the possible subsets of a universal set. And the order between elements is defined as a set inclusion. And the union operator, the joint operator, operator is defined as a set union. And in the Byzantine Nattis agreement problem, each process has an input value from some joint seminatis and they must decide on also some output in the Nettis such that the following properties are satisfied. The first, the first one is downward validity, which requires the output of any correct process has to be at least its input and upward validity, uh, which requires that the Byzantine guys can introduce at most T values into the decision value of correct process, where T is the actual number of Byzantine process in an execution and say is the set of correct processes. It seems uh, trivial for the, uh, in our definition of upper validity because some Byzantine guys can uh, just propose the largest value in the Nettis. So our argument is like, first of all, the Nettis can be uh, unbounded. And second, the, in practice, we can try to limit the, the input of uh, processes. Um, Compar the most important one is comparable ability, which requires the uh, any two correct process, they have to output comparable values, either yi less than yj or yj less than yi. They have to lie on a chain their values. Here's the related work and our results. So the Nettis agreement problem has been studied previously and the best upper bound um, is an um, uh, order of log f algorithm, so which is not early term terminating and with resilience f less than n and the uh, order of a log square t can be implied from the same work and so which means it's early it's stopping because it depends on t the number the actual number by sending fingers in execution and in this work we propose the our primary contribution are two algorithms one is the order of a root uh, square root t algorithm which is early stopping and the second one is the order of log f rounds algorithm, which is logarithmic rounds with resilience f less than over three, which has been proven to be optimal. Um, in a concurrent work by Dinuna, they have a uh, order of log f rounds, but the resilience is over only f less than n over four. Yeah. So our first result is the order of square root t early stopping algorithm. And we use a basic framework. Uh, it's similar to the uh, consensus uh, pro um, problem in synchronous case. Each process sends its current value to all at each round. And they also, uh, in our case, they will take the 
join of all the receive values and decides when receive values are comparable. Uh, if it's if its value is comparable with all the receive values. And, but that will only give us the order of uh, T runs algorithm because of the longest finger chain. There could be a length of a uh, uh, finger chain of length T. And our idea is used gray cast to detect the Byzantine process along the way. So each process will use gray cast to send their value. And uh, by the property of gray cast, we can ensure that uh, at each round, either a Byzantine is called a Byzantine process is called by everyone, every correct process, where it must send consistent values to all. And this is uh, where our early stopping comes from because there are there can be at most T Byzantine process. And our second idea is to keep track of net each process, keep track of a safe net is it's basically defined as a, as a partial net is and using some safe value set. And this is used to prevent Byzantine guys from introducing arbitrary values into our into the decision value of correct process. And we, if we use those two ideas, we will get the square root T rounds algorithm. Yeah, our second algorithm is a logarithmic round algorithm. And we, uh, again, we use a high level framework. Uh, we try to divide, uh, design a classifier procedure that divides a group into two subgroup, two subgroups and ensure one group dominates the other. By dominate, we mean the values of one group is, uh, is less than and uh, or equal to the value of other group. And if we have such a procedure, then we can apply this procedure within each subgroup recursively. Uh, this is at least uh, the framework for crash finger setting. But in the Byzantine case, because after you do the classification, then Byzantine case in one group can mess up the, the values of the other group. They can introduce some additional values, uh, send values to the other group. So in order to do that, our main contribution is a Byzantine tolerant classifier procedure, which uh, first of all, ensures the domination property at the current level of the recursion. And then it also ensures that the values of one group is always are always less than the other group, even if the recursion goes on. Yeah, and here's the open problem. Uh, the primary open problem is the nor bound for the lattice agreement problem. And there are no or bound, no or bound results at all, even in the crash finger setting. And our conjecture is order of log f is the nor bound. All right, thank you. That's my presentation today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So, are there any questions? Okay, Petr Kuznetsov has one. Says thanks. Very interesting. Do you think the problem has an asynchronous solution? What about the long-lived version, also defined by Falero et al. Uh, yeah, I think the problem uh, there is already for the for this problem there is already a asynchronous version, uh, asynchronous algorithm which but it takes order of uh, f rounds. F is the resilience parameter. In our case, it's logarithmic. And in the crash finger for the both asynchronous and uh, asynchronous, we can get the order of log f uh, bound. So it uh, an open question remains as to how we can obtain order of a uh, uh, log f nor bound for the asynchronous version. And we have some partial results, but we, we our results does, uh, don't achieve the optimal resilience, uh, which is f less than L over three. And for the long lived, uh, I think that problem is just the atomic snapshot problem or the generalized lattice agreement problem. And it's also interesting to show if we can obtain this uh, log f uh, round bound for the non if problem. It's I think it's still open. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Uh, our next presentation is entitled "Brief Announcement: Polygraph Accountable Byzantine Agreement" by Pierre Civit, Seth Gilbert, and Vincent Grimoli. And Pierre will give the presentation. Hello, everyone. So I'm happy to present to you this work. Okay, so uh, we're interested in uh, solving the, the consensus where a set of n nodes uh, want to eventually agree on a common uh, value value. Um, but in fact, uh, in uh, an asynchronous uh, setting, uh, the problem uh, uh, cannot tolerate a number t of Byzantine nodes, which is a 
greater than n over three. And uh, this is even the case for a degrading version where we would like to ensure uh, safety and lightness for t lower than n over three and uh, still preserve safety if t is greater than n over three. So this is a great motivation uh, to interest on what we call the accountable Byzantine agreement. So that is a problem where we would like to still solve consensus as long as uh, t is uh, lower than n over three. Uh, but in the case uh, where t is greater than n over 3, we'd like to eventually ensure uh, the detection of uh, uh, at least n over 3 Byzantine processes. So during the executions, the nodes will exchange some uh, signed messages. Uh, here, Charlie collects uh, the blue signed message from Bob, and so on and so forth during the execution. Uh, at the end, uh, they collected a certain set of pieces of information and collectively they collect uh, an even greater set of pieces info of information. In fact, nothing uh, prevents them to exchange the, their log to breed a, a greater set of pieces of information. So a proof of Kubernetes against a node, uh, let's say Alice, uh, this is a collection of messages so that there is no execution where Alice is correct and uh, sign all those messages. For example, for example, we could imagine a protocol where it is forbidden to sign uh, a red and a green messages. Uh, and in this case, if you can collect uh, those messages, this is a, a, a proof of capability uh, against Alice. So um, a typical strategy to attack a Byzantine agreement uh, so that there is no accountability is to design uh, two uh, indistinguishable scenarios, alpha and alpha prime, where the collected pieces of information are the same for the, the two scenarios. So here, let's imagine that uh, it is forbidden to send uh, a red uh, message after having sent uh, a green message. So that here, Charlie is, uh, is malicious here. And then we have approximately the same execution, except that this is dev, which is, uh, which is malicious. And uh, at the very end uh, of, the, of the execution, Bob Alice can, of course, exchange the logs, but they are not able to distinguish uh, the two previous uh, scenarios. So this is what we have done for PBFT. So we build a, a chain of, uh, of uh, malicious primaries. So here it's represented by Eva, uh, that do not um, communicate uh, with Alice and Bob uh, through uh, the, the executions uh, until there is a disagreement. And after the, the disagreement, uh, Alice and Bob are not able to distinguish the, the two uh, execution so that there is a disagreement, but no accountability. And to circumvent uh, this issue, uh, we extend a little a leader list based uh, binary agreement to eventually ensure um, accountable Byzantine agreement. So that's what does uh, polygraph our algorithm. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions? So I have a simple one. So what is the kind of the next step then in this work? What's kind of the main open question? Um, so the next step is to, of course, reduce the, the bit complexity because there, there is a, an overhead uh, compared to the, to the non accountable version. Uh, then to, to do so, you can uh, use some uh, randomization. So we already have so, some ideas. And thereafter, um, other interesting uh, perspectives are um, give some uh, generic uh, transformation and maybe but uh, for that we, we should um, define um, randomized uh, synchrony but we could imagine some um, game theory based uh, perspective where you could imagine that the, the, the Byzantine are afraid to, to be proof guilty and maybe if they are uh, rational too they, they, they won't try to, to tackle the, the system because the, uh, the probability is that the, the probability is too high for them and the punishment is too high. So the, uh, this is the, the perspective for us. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah, question? yeah there's yeah. a question. Mm -hmm. um, hi, so 
to try to understand this accountability property, you you identify the culprit or you just uh, declare failure? Is it like the... Uh, I'm not sure to, to understand, but what we have done that is if there is a disagreement, eventually there is a proof of culpability against at least an about three nodes. So you, you could say this is the, the coalition, okay. maybe there are even more uh, so you, things like that. You first disagree and then you discover that you disagree, then you know who is at fault? Yeah, because in a asynchronous setting, you okay. cannot uh, detect before the, yeah. the disagreement. Yeah, I think um, I'll, I'll send you a link there. So I think there's a, there's some, some related result that does like fork linearizability that does forking and then detects the fork and, and shows who's responsible for it. Yeah, okay. I haven't seen it in this context of consensus, but thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll go on to the next the presentation, which is the last one for the session. Yes, so uh, the next present uh, talk is in the title Brief Announcement, Optimally Resilient, Unconditionally Secure, Asynchronous Multi-Party Computation Revisited by Ashish Chaudhary, who is suffering from uh, power failure. Hello, everyone. Uh, myself, Ashish Chaudhary, and I will be talking about this brief announcement titled Optimally resilient, unconditionally secure asynchronous MPC revisited. So here is the brief summary of the paper. In this work, we propose a new unconditionally secure MPC protocol in the asynchronous setting with optimal resilience of T less than N over three and communication complexity of N power kappa bits per multiplication. Uh, this has to be compared with the uh, previously best protocol due to Patra et al, which requires a communication of n power five times kappa. So we get a saving of order n in the communication complexity. And as a new contribution, we propose a protocol which is for asynchronous complete secret sharing, which is very simple and communication efficient. So the problem of MPC is as follows. We have a set of n mutually distrusting parties, up to t of them can be bad. And there is an nary function which takes the inputs of all the n parties and the output is the function of the n inputs from the n parties. We need to design an interactive protocol which allows the parties to securely compute the function output, achieving privacy, correctness, independence of inputs, guaranteed output delivery and so on. So <clears throat> formally the security is formalized by saying that this should be equivalent as if the parties are interacting with a trusted third party by sending their inputs to the TTP who computes the function output and sends back the output to all the parties. So these are the relevant results for unconditionally secure asynchronous MPC. For perfect security where all the properties are achieved in an energy fashion, the optimal resilience is T less than N over four, whereas if a small error is allowed in the outcome, then the optimal resilience is T less than N over three, where T is the maximum number of corruptions which can happen. And this is the bit complexity of existing statistically secure AMPC protocol with optimal resilience along with others. So the original protocol due to Benor et al has a high communication complexity of N power 11. The work of Patra et al reduced the communication to n power five. And in this work, we get a further saving of ordering in the communication complexity. So a key primitive which is used in the unconditionally secure asynchronous MPC is that of asynchronous complete secret sharing, which allows to verifiably generate some secret sharing in the asynchronous world. So the protocol of Beno et al for ACSS is very complex because it is built on top of so many sub protocols. And due to that, the communication of the ACSS of Beno et al is extensively high. The <clears throat> ACSS of Patra et al gets rid of many sub protocols and that simplifies the overall ACSS and also the communication complexity gets reduced. In this work, we further reduce the number of sub protocols which are used in the ACSS and in the process we get a saving of ordering in the communication complexity. So the full details are available in this ePrint archive report. Thank you. Okay, so um, that completes uh, session one.